Good day, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. In some parts of Australia, it is in the night, and uh, in Kenya, here it is uh, good afternoon to all, wherever you are tuned in. Lottery. This is number three in the presentation. A preparatory for Lottery. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for this afternoon and thank you for the love and the guidance. Help us indeed to be prepared in the and do the necessary by holding the hand of omnipotence that we may be ready. Without you, we can do nothing. And so, you in us, we in you. Father, let us hold to the cords of love that cannot be broken, even the love of Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, for giving Jesus Christ as the comforter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are looking at this series, The Lateran, and uh, right now I want us to look uh, at uh, the preparations necessary for In the morning, we were looking at uh, the upper room experience. The time had now come. The spirit had been waiting for the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Christ. And then the number 12. heaven added his intercession and today as we are lifting up our Christ unto the Lord he is mixing with his victorious life our petitions and then because our lips are impure then uh, it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are accepted. And so, although impure vessels, if we come in the merits of the Son of God, we are accepted. On the Claim the gift, even the promise. Look at the book of Acts. So 
receptor 2. of more deeper things in this series and as we look at the preparatory for the latter end I want us to look at uh, the book of we can talk about the book of during the latter end Acts chapter 2 verses 3 Acts 2.33 So I'll start In verses twenty nine, men and death and God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Before Christ, that was not left in this, which it is hath God raised up where of all we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of this which the spirit of from the father and he shed on the disciples and he is waiting for his children to be ready so that chapter 3 Titus chapter 3 closely at verses 6 starting from verse 3 for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceived serving diverse pleasures living and hating one another but that man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, verse which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. And so Christ received the Spirit from the Father. The Father has shed us unto us the Holy Spirit. We are looking at the presentation, a preparatory for the latter rain. God would want to do something for his people. But his people must accept Christ to be renewed in their lives daily. And a work of reformation, now it's left unto us to remedy the defects in our characters. God is willing to give us similar blessings when we seek for it honestly.
Review and Herald, June 4, 1889. Heaven's reservoir of power, not law. God is willing to give us a similar blessing when we seek for it honestly. The Lord did not lock the survey of heaven after pouring his spirit upon the early disciples. We also may receive of the fullness of his blessing. Heaven is full of the treasures of his grace and those who come to God in faith may claim all that he has promised. If we do not have his power, it is because of our spiritual lethargy, our indifference, our intolerance, laziness, our don't care attitude. Let us come out of this formality and deadness. And we shall be able to see Christ do marvelous things unto us, pure and simple. Skin press upon the hearts of the young. From earliest childhood, the youth were instructed in the scriptures and taught to regard sacredly the claims of the large portions of both the Old and the New Testament. Thoughts of God were associated alike with the sublime scenery of nature and with the humble blessings of daily life. the preparations necessary the preparator for the latter rain in the work that was of together there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like us of their belief. But the power that accompanied the words of the speaker convinced them that Christ was indeed the Messiah. What a mighty work was accomplished! Three thousand were converted in. meeting to the will of God that wrought such a, a mighty work amongst the disciples. And the teachings of the disciples. Why? Because a power attended to and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And so, by their living testimony, living according to the will of Christ that made such a, a change in the hearts of those who then they will have not been able to do a work that was Pentecost. Look at the book of Acts, chapter six, verses seven. were able to do. Acts 6, 7.
and the word of God increased. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Why were they obedient to the faith? They saw that Christ was with the disciples. If we will have a work that will touch the clergy and the laymen in these times that we are living in, then our lives will have to correspond with what Christ has taught us. When this man spoke, the people realized that they had been with Christ. And in our manner of conversation, they will know if we have been with Jesus or if we have not been with Jesus. Look at the book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 A preparator for the latter rain Acts chapter 4 verses 13 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Men must look unto the people professing goodness and see that actually, of Jesus Christ in the people who profess Christianity. Lift him up. Page 266, paragraph 2. Lift him up, 266, paragraph 2. We are to reflect the character of Jesus everywhere, whether in the church, at our homes, or in social intercourse with our neighbors. We should let the lovely image of Jesus appear. This we cannot do unless we are filled with his fullness. If we will become better acquainted with Jesus, we should love him for his goodness and excellence, and we should desire to become so assimilated to his divine character that all will know that we had been with Jesus and learned of him, just as it was seen with the disciples in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. When men look at us, do they see that we have been Jesus? Do they see that we have been assimilated to his divine character? Have we partaken of him or we are sit still worldlings that desire the things of the world are we still corrupted by the things of the world are we still led by the arch enemy 
or is our image being changed daily and are we conforming to the pattern of Jesus Christ himself who gave up everything for our salvation but he awaits his people it is with honest longing that the Lord Glory of God. But we must accept that the glory is not us, but himself. If we received anything, then we can reflect anything. Review and Herald, July 20, 1886, the prophet says, This is what the prophet says in Review and Herald. Brothers and sisters, we need to be converted once again. God can breathe new life into every soul that sincerely desires to serve him and can touch the lips with a live call from off the altar and cause them to become eloquent with his praise. Thousands of voices will be imbued with the power to speak forth the wonderful truths of God's word. The stammering tongue will be unloosed and the timid will be made strong to bear courageous testimony to the truth. May the Lord help his people to cleanse the soul temple from every defilement and to maintain such a close connection with him that they may be partakers of the latter rain when it shall be poured out. So for us to participate in the latter rain, we have to cleanse our soul temple from every defilement and maintain such a close connection with Jesus Christ. Without that, there is no partaking of the Holy Spirit. And that will soon be fulfilled. During the proclamation of the third angel's message, another angel is to come down from heaven having great power, and the earth is to be lightened with his their lips in praise and thanksgiving, filling the earth with the knowledge of God and with his unsurpassed glory as the waters cover the sea. Those at the beginning of the end will be message prepares for translation amid the confusing Christ lo here is Christ lo there is Christ will be born a special message to be received upon seeing and believing of the message but actually by acting upon it it is the truth not fanciful ideas that is efficacious the eternal truth about from all fanciful drawn alluring pictures falsehood will be eyed upon the attention of God's people but the truth is to stand close in it is beautiful it is dominated by the fallacies by which Satan seeks to deceive if possible, the very elect. The proclamation of the gospel is the only means in which God can employ you. Upon the hearts of the truly patent and his law, the animating spirit of God, not another God, the spirit, working through human agents, this leads the So what must we do, brothers and sisters? It is to cleanse our soul temple. And in Romans chapter 1, 
the book of Romans chapter 1, Paul says this, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so the Lord is waiting upon those who can hold on to the faith and live the message of righteousness by faith so that he may What you have to do is grow up in Christ and partake largely of his spirit. And as the third angel's message swells to a loud cry, that in which revives through the with glory of the light which attends the third angel's message. In fact, when you read the book of Daniel, chapter 12, we are told that many Verses 3 And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them one at the time of the end. Yet for a time. wait for the latter rain. It is coming upon all who will recognize and appropriate the dew and showers, grace that fall upon us. When we are gathered up the with the glory of God, it is only appropriating the light that we have received that more light can be added unto us and we can be able to prepare our people to We can for sure know that the time of taste is just upon us and Christ the sin pardoning redeemer is about to finish his work in the most holy place. Among the last acts of the ministry was the second cleansing of the temple. In 1844, when Christ entered into the most holy place, he started the work of cleansing the temple. shall be proclaimed, come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins. That is Babylon. We may be separated from the world and the worldlings. And so let us not wait for any compelling power. The outpouring of the Spirit of God in the apostles was just the beginning of what God ready unto him. The bride clothed in the linen, which is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In fact, we are told.
the book of Ephesians chapter 5 that Christ is waiting to present his church and before his father but unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Their greatest special bestowal of spiritual grace to the church of Christ. Right now, Christ is knocking on the church to enter in And what must we do? We must surrender. We must surrender. Among us, those who shall receive translation. Steps to Christ, page 43. Steps to Christ, 43, paragraph 3. Brothers and sisters, we are looking at the preparator for the latter rain. Steps to Christ, 43, paragraph 3. The warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. The yielding of self, surrendering all the will of God, requires a struggle, but the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. The warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. The yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God, requires a struggle, but the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. If we don't submit holy into holiness. The Lord is waiting for us to surrender. Will we yield our selfish ambitions or will we be in the done in our lives? Look at faith and works, page 100, paragraph 1, and page 100, paragraph 1, and paragraph 2. This is what we have. But while God can be just and yet justify the sinner through the merits of Christ, no man can cover his soul with Christ's righteousness while practicing his own duties. Requires the entire surrender of the heart. And in order for man to retain justification, there must be continual obedience through active living faith that works by love and purifies the soul. James Wright of when he on the old it was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God the heart and it is by obedience that faith itself is made perfect we must not just be believers and say that believe believe we 
we must come to fully surrender to Jesus Christ. Our life must conform to all the truth we have had. A preparatory for the latter in the book of Romans. The book of Romans. The annexed expectation of the creature. The creature has been put under vanity. But as even it has been put under vanity, what does it await? The book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 17. Romans chapter 8 from verse 17. The important notes that you have to key in are preparatory for the latter rain. Romans chapter 8 from verse 17. bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children of God and Jesus Christ him that we may also fight together without the suffering together with Christ and for us to be joined hairs with Christ we must be like the hair himself Verse 18, for I reckon that the suffering of them are not expected for the sons of God. What is this manifestation that the creature are awaiting upon? John chapter 17, this is what we read. Verses. It says, I'm faithful in the world, thine they were, and thou gavest me, and they have kept the word. So Christ says that he has manifested the name of God and the name of God is God. The latter rain, they have to have the seal of the Father's name on their forehead. Revelation chapter 14 verses 1. in John chapter 17 verse 6 manifested the name of the Lord so the people living in the end time they have to manifest the name of the Lord Revelation 14 verse 1 and that is manifested it to live in pureness and holiness verse 20 for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. For the whole creation and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first foot of the Spirit, even the, uh, we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the We saved by. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. How do we wait, wait patiently for something? Being faithful even unto the death. This is what the whole earth is to be like if they will receive the latter rain. 
And so, as the world languishes in sin, God has called his church in this day as he called ancient Israel to stand as light in the earth. By the mighty cleaver, the first and second use the earth. From the church. Nothing is permitted to hinder the work that we have to do and the reforms that we have to do. Whether men will despise us, whether men will, we have books open. To receive the eyes salve and the anointing of Jesus Christ, then our eyes will be able to hear the spiritual things that Christ wants to. They are ready to bring the Spirit to the people. Christ is ready to breathe upon His church. Of Ezekiel, able to receive the flesh and then to receive the breath of life, and they became a great army. This is the state of the church that it has been left like dry bones. The Lord will like to put so that my. So this. And if the prophecy of Joel met a partial fulfillment in the days of Apostle, how much so? on a great the Lord Himself will bestow His Spirit upon His people that they may become a light amid. The moral darkness, a great light will be reflected in all parts of the world. By partaking of Jesus Christ, we shall be able to The Lord shall rise upon thee, and the Gentiles and the kings shall come unto thy light. That is in the book of Isaiah. It has only leaves and a fruit to be found on us. Many of us are like the fig tree standing by the roadside to deceive the a peculiar people and others reprobates, hypocrites, good for nothing in their profession. Their religion, we see that it has nothing but to the people instead. Ever read or heard. And so, when Christ was passing by the way, he saw a fig tree and desired a fruit from it. But when he went there, people of God, although the time that the Christ wanted the fruit from the fig tree was an appropriate, the only thing. He Five. Let us go there. The book of Hebrews, chapter five. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 
11 to 14. Talking about Jesus Christ, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are all dull of hearing. Many of us are of dull hearing. For when, for the time we ought to be teachers, we have need that one teach us again, which be the first principles of oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. This is the state that we found ourselves in that we have been entrusted with much but we produce so less at the still babes and he goes ahead and say in chapter 6 verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection not let and this we will do if God permit. Paul is talking about the work that was found in the courtyard. He's saying that let us leave this work alone. This is not our work. This. We too have passed the courtyard of hearing. We still practice the works that are found in the courtyard. He's saying, let us leave these things and go to perfection. Let us leave these things. Let us go into perfection, which is found in the most holy place. The context of Revelation chapter 11 speaks about the events of the beast from In Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, Revelation And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. Therein, God which is without the temple, out and measure it not in and the holy city shall be tread under foot for forty and two months. The courtyard is for the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, it's not for the people who have come mature of the word of God. Shrine are there. Those who have come in place, they are to be measured. Is their profession in correspondence with the place that they are standing in their heart? Every truth that they have received in Christ. Are we only a tree professing? It is a time the present state of the church should change. We have to ask us any grievous thing.
we are told the Lord has shown us what is good. And he, 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 this is the question that everyone should ask themselves. The book of Micah chapter 6. The book of Micah, chapter 6. This is what we read. From verse 1, going down to verse 8, Micah chapter 6. Hear what the word of the Here you now lifted the foundations of the earth for the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will plead with Israel O oh, my people what have I done unto thee and wherein have I wearied thee testify against the Lord continues to say O oh, my people, remember now that Bala, king of Moab, consulted and what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering with calves of a year old? Will Verse 8, he has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, brothers and sisters, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk with thy God. What the Lord requireth of us is to walk humbly before him. There is no reason to continue in stiff nakedness. There is no reason to continue with our own ways to the truth of what Christ is doing in the most holy place we need to yield Is there anything we need from the Lord? This is the time to ask for it before it is too late. Book of Psalms. Psalms 116. Listen to what the Bible says. I'll read. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice. 
inclined his ear and he must then call I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous here, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple, I was brought low. Return, rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath bountifully my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. And listen what the psalmist prays. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. I have said, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all the people. A preparatory for the latter rain. It's a time as our law. We have to repent of our backsliding. The Lord is worried with our backsliding. He doesn't like it. We have to come like forbearance. What we need is Christ's forbearance in our lives. Christ-like forbearance. Seeking to... Workplace. What every soul need to do is sit down in Christ's school and learn of Christ, who declares himself to be meek and lowly of heart. And vivifying our spiritual life, we will never make it. As we come to a close, I want to leave you with these sentiments. When we have this, we shall love one another, brothers and sisters. Here are the credentials that we are to bear. This shall all make my disciples. You have love. In the soul, his spirit in me will harmonize with this spirit in you. And he who controls our minds controls also the heavenly intelligences, and they cooperate with us. The worst passions of the heart. What we want, brothers and sisters, is to find refuge in Jesus Christ. What we want is to be converted. What I want is to be converted. Eighty-eight messages, page 903, paragraph 10. Sister White, the messenger of the Lord, continues, I fear that some will never be converted, not because God is not in the errors and in contrition of heart seek God in repentance now shall we put away this impertinent spirit shall we fall on the rock and be broken if we are living brothers and sisters in revolt here on earth there is no way we can go to heaven and live there because no revolutions will be in heaven now whom one nine says that sin shall never happen but if we can unity peace
thing that we are here on earth. When Christ comes, he will not change us. He will, we will just continue in the same life. No revolutions in heaven. Lastly, for us. A divine Savior died for us, for all, that all might find in Him. In Christ, we are members of the Father, through Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave His life a ransom for us. This places an equal value upon all, to the poor and oppressed and downtrodden of us. Christ says, and within the hope of glory whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you I will not leave you comfortless the comforter is Christ formed within the hope of glory how do we receive him? loving one another Loving his command. That's like. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It shall be given him. in all things we must believe we must hold on to the faith that what we have prayed we have, shall get it in fact in Mark chapter 11 we are told that we and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Keep yourself away the filthiness and the things you love of this world. The Lord is soon to come. We want that complete and perfect understanding which the Lord only alone can give. Sister White, letter 66, 1894. <coughs> what we need in our hearts right now is the very presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. I pray that uh, the latter rain series will bring a blessing unto your souls and the Lord will... <coughs> do his marvelous works in our hearts that we will be thoroughly converted and won unto him so that when he outpours his latter rain that we may not be missing one thing that is dreadful that we are told it may be falling where we are but we shall not be receiving it why because we have not been consecrated and given ourselves unto him I pray that we will renew our walk with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and kindness that you give us second chances. And this night hear us when we pray this day that we may not continue in spiritual lethargy, in laudition condition, but we may be converted unto this so that when the latter rain falls, we may participate in it. Thank you for thy grace which is sufficient in time of need. Father, fill us with thy own self even the spirit of thy son. And thank you for thy grace, and thank you for what is happening around the world. Let it draw us closer to thee, more than it will remove us from thee. In Jesus' name, Amen.